just wanted to say super thanks for uh, a thousand followers on YouTube here. A big thanks to Richard at the Tarantula Collective, Russ at Aquaramax, Alex at Tarantula Haven, Peter at Bugs in Cyberspace, as well as Jesse in Shapes in Nature. Those are all familiar accounts if you follow any of my stuff, and they're all doing amazing things, so check them out. I also just wanted to go through a couple of the critters we have. So here is a giant shield mantis, the Rombadira megaria. We have a lot of little ones that this one's produced. She's getting a little old now. You can see there's actually spots in her eyes beyond her little regular eye spot that follows you around, or pseudo pupil, as they call it. And we've also got a couple orchid ladies back in the back here. And I just want to go over a couple more critters we're looking at. One of my favorite species is the Cryptognathus, which are a little thin and hard for the camera to take a look at, but woo a little fast and hard to wrangle, but there we go. There's a Cryptognathus, spindly, fast little ones. Beyond their speed and agility and just keeping track of them, they're a very easy mantis to work with, so I would say beginner species as far as care is concerned, but not beginner as far as handleability. So that's always a fun species. And runner up for adorable semi-communal, these guys do pretty well in groups. One that's better known for well in groups, but less communal I have found would be the ghost mantises, which would be these guys. When people ask if I handle mantises, this species is much easier to handle. They just kind of fall over and play dead, whereas these guys will take off and run away or sometimes will go defensive. And these guys are, I call them expensive popcorn. They just pop off onto the ground. So this is a much more handleable species. A little smaller, prefer smaller feeders, which is why they're semi-communal. But also there is a chance in cannibalism with this species. It's a little higher than with the cats and the cryptics. The species also turns green under high humidity, so a green female can turn grass uh, tan if it's kept in a drier setup. Males are always either tan or darker brown. There's a male, so you can see that sexual dimorphism. Nice long antenna to pick up the pheromones, nice long wings to get to where the ladies are. These ladies are, you know, ready to build ooths. There you go, there's the ghosts. So this is one of my favorite species to work with and definitely my suggested beginner's exotic mantis. And as far as the other best communal, that would be the cat eye mantis, which is this little lady right here. Not a stick insect, as it looks similar to a phasmid family, which would be a convergent evolution. Two different families, or two different groups of animals have evolved the same uh, traits. The cat eye mantises are gorgeous, and they do really well in groups. But they do need larger enclosures and super small feeders. I stick to blue bottle flies most of these guys' life. I have a nice video about feeding them super worms as well. You can tong feed them pretty easily, which helps... Uh, vary the feeders that you can offer them. But it has been pretty easy care. No need for super high humidity or temperatures. Good in groups, like I said, which makes them easy once they have youngins. And let's take a look at some other critters. Another new star in the hobby would be the isopods. And here's a pile of adorable ones. We've got some Magic Potion, some Gestroy. These are all housed separately. I just thought I'd bring out some individuals to show the Magic Potion and the Gestroy are both Armadillidium species, so they roll up into a tight ball. And then also in here we have some of the Titans, or the Hoffman's Eggy, which are Porcelio species, so they're a little flatter built. And we've got a male Hoffman's Eggy as well as an example of a female in here, and the females have smaller tail, which is their little faces. There you go, you see that little tail fins on her versus this little guy. But there's a, yeah, there's a pile of crustaceans. Uh, isopods all need a little bit of humidity somewhere in their enclosure because they still breed with modified gills 
which means the moisture in the air helps them to breathe. They're a very fun species to keep in captivity. Becoming more and more popular. And then I have an extinct in the wild roach. We added a couple of these to the collection at the PAX Northwest show. This is a species that their wild habitat was a cave that was destroyed for mining, and so they're only in the hobby. And they're very beautiful, but very fast. This is the extinct in the wild roach. So a very fun ambassador to the uniqueness of habitats and the vulnerability of different species. And then lastly, I have a surprise that I need to do a whole video on, so I'm going to do a lot of other roach species and talk about this. This looks to be a mixed sex individual. There's a female of this species, these are the gyna, and there's a male, the little tiny males, and then this little one I found today. And I'm not sure what's going on. So we'll do a whole video about that. Okay, yeah, so there's some of the critters, and I also had a couple new designs put together. Let me know which you like the best. I didn't realize at the time, but I totally drew a C. elegans and a T. elegans as my first two designs. So that was accidental, but interesting to see I did the same species name. Totally different animals. We also had some questions off of Instagram from Mantis Haven, my favorite non-insect animal. I love all animals. It's really hard to do the favorites thing, as everybody always says, but probably giraffes. I love giraffes, and this is from my friend Jesse, and it's uh, my little pony giraffe, because those exist. And then I also really like quail. And Luca's Biohub, what was a challenge you faced that you weren't expecting in the hobby would be I'm allergic to hissing roaches. I'm actually having to get rid of some of them because of that. Um, they really affect me, and so that's been a challenge that it's been difficult, and also I really don't like plastic waste, so having to buy and reuse and work with stuff that I can separate the animals, especially with the uh, mantises, is definitely ethically challenging. So those are those answers for Instagram. Thank you guys. Thanks everyone for watching. This new lady's almost gotten to the camera at this point. Thank you everyone. Whoop. Bye. Oh, also the tablecloth was designed by Hey Haas, H-E-Y dot... H-O-S-S -S on Instagram, and I absolutely love this print. Get a good look at it. The Mantis print's amazing. And yeah, that's all I can think of for the moment. Check out some of the other videos on mantises, tarantulas, geckos, and frogs. And check out, keep an eye out for that roach video. We'll see if that roach is a male and female, or what in the world is going on with that species of gyna.